Cool 101.7. We have a special guest in here. I don't know how I did it, but I got this super mega star, which I'm a huge fan of. I'm going to melt pretty soon in front of you. Barbara Streisand, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, gorgeous. <laughs> or at least the next best thing, you know. <laughs> uh, Barbara, I don't know how we got you to Duluth. Well, um, you know, I'm good friends with the owner of Rubber Chicken. And, it, you know, it's comedy company. and all He knows that. everybody. He knows everybody. He, Brian knows everyone. And actually, if I can backtrack a little bit, I had performed... I'm still his barber, if you don't mind, because, you know. Anyway, I had performed with my dear friend Liberace, David Safford, mm -hmm. um, and, and, and Jillian. And I, did, I was a guest on their show when they did theirs. So that was really exciting. And I missed their show, too. You know, you really have to, you have to figure these things out. I, mean, I know. When is I can't this gonna schedule. This you is can't another... always go to Vegas, right? I mean, That's you can true. <laughs> Uh, uh, Barbara's going to be playing this weekend, part of the Rubber Chicken Theater. And uh, uh, so now, what are some of the things that we can look forward to in your show? Well, um, as Melody, <laughs> I might I might be a little schizoid and go back and forth if you okay. don't mind. <laughs> um, base, it's a really fantastic array of music. So there's songs from Barbara's concert, concert series, um, musicals she's been in. Movies, Yentl, uh -huh. and it basically outlines um, the ups and downs of love, starting with young love okay. and moving into a more mature love in the second set. And so it's, it's something for everyone because it's for people who aren't in love and wanting it. It's people who are happily in love, maybe who are unhappily in love looking to make a change. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, maybe if you're single looking to mingle, you know. Right, right. <laughs> So it's for everyone. Is exactly, what you're right. exactly. Except for people that hate other people, we don't want them there because well, it's all love. You know. Well, you know. I, you know. I have some. I have a couple songs that can address that. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, it's a huge range, and I didn't want to like just. Well, Keith Russell is my director and co-writer, mm -hmm. and it's so funny because we were talking about this. He doesn't like Valentine's or Valentine's Day anything, and he right. actually wrote the show, and it's really brilliant. And I love how he also. Included like down with love, like down with love and flowers and rice and shoes and like like these total breakup songs. But then he has these great <laughs> and I'm just like, this is the perfect balance because I, per, me personally, like I love love, but I've never I've always been like a tomboy and I'm not into drawing big hearts and being like, oh, my gosh, you're the greatest thing. You know, let me hug you 10 million times. Right. I'm just not that way. I've never been. And I just I love how it's such a balanced show, but you still leave like feeling filled, you know? I have a friend that never celebrates Valentine's Day because he says he and his wife go out on romantic dates all the time, so they don't <laughs> ever celebrate. But one time they he decided to be nice on Valentine's Day and bought her the large Slurpee. What? And put it on her seat, and she didn't look. Whoa. <laughs> so it was a wonderful Valentine's Day for the both of them. It was the most memorable one, exactly. for sure. Exactly. <laughs> So he said, that's why we still don't celebrate because nothing has gone well. That, on that is day anyway. fantastic. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. That's <laughs> the greatest. <laughs> so what made you start doing Barbara? Well, um, I was, I've been a big fan of hers since I was little, starting with the Guilty album in the 80s. Mm -hmm. So I used to imitate her and, and dance around the living room, singing all those songs. And um, in, in my... You know, as I was cultivating as a vocalist, mm -hmm. I took the classical route. So okay. I was doing arias and art song and went through undergrad and grad school and classical and, and did all that. And then I got kind of burned out, ironically. And because, <laughs> because really, it's like you practice and practice and practice and practice. You're like a hamster on the wheel, you know, and then you're waiting for your one big break. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, I just want to sing. Like, really, I just want to sing. And if it's every weekend, great. So I joined um, a cover bands and R&B bands and all this stuff. And um, in the Twin Cities where I live, um, it's a pretty saturated market. And it yeah. was a couple of years ago that I thought, you know, what what does this community need? What what can I bring? Because I'm a really outside the box thinker artistically. Okay. I'm like, what is it that no one else is doing right now here that I feel like I can fill a niche and just, you know, just have my own niche and not feel, not have to compete with any other bands or whatever. And that's when I was like, well, I can do Barbra Streisand. But it took me forever because it's so daunting mm -hmm. and it's such an epic role. 
And plus, I want to do her original keys. However, her keys have gone down over the decades. Yeah. So it's funny because when I'm in the 60s doing people, that version, that key is different from the 70s and the 80s. <laughs> so it's kind of funny. but. Um, and she's all over the place in style, too. Yes, yes. And I... You know, and that even shows more so, I think, currently in her newer Walls album, because I'm hearing, and I, I, of course, good orchestration and some lush orchestration, but I'm hearing some edgier stuff coming from her. And I'm mm-hmm. like, wow. And I remember just looking at the album cover thinking, gosh, Barbara, you're so emo now. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, she's like in her goth emo. And I'm like, wow, <laughs> another another Barbara planet to uncover you know, and it's just amazing. And it's true because I also do a decades show where I'll go from 60s, 70s, 80s with costume and wig changes. Wow. And I'll change my sound, you know, to those decades. And it just trips me out. Mm-hmm. Like how even when I'm listening to a compilation, how her sound is completely different one song to the next or the same song, but recorded later. And I'm like, wow, because she never did it the same way twice. Yeah. And it's like amazing. And I... I think that's another reason why this project is so enriching. And I, people are like, aren't you tired of doing it? And I'm like, no, because I feel like I can constantly extract. Like if I think I really know a version, I'll listen back and go, oh, my gosh, like I didn't get that one little thing. <gasps> I didn't even know that was there. I didn't hear it before. And I've been, you know what I mean? So it yeah. just feels like, um, you know, I'm just trying to analyze a, I don't know, Michelangelo or the Sistine Chapel. And I'm just looking at every detail. And every time I go back to it, I see something different. And that's how I feel about her music and recordings and legacy. So it keeps it fresh. Always fresh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I just think that she's uh, one of the few artists that has been able to change with the times and yet still stay. I know. Barbara. It's insane and the thing that is amazing to me in the 60s she was doing like ballads and classics and standards and they were getting like top of the chart and here you have the Shirelles and all these 60s bands who were coming through really making it but somehow the timelessness of Barbara Streisand and her sound and her authenticity always just cut like cut to the top Mm -hmm. no matter what was happening in our musically in our culture you know she knows how to pick a song. Yes. Because, uh, I mean, here she is recording with guys that are kind of done. Neil yeah. Diamond was kind of done yeah. at the time when yeah. she recorded Don't Bring Me Flowers. Right, right. Um, the Bee Gees had already been past their Saturday Night Live right. or Saturday Night Fever stuff. Right. And, and yet she's doing these songs and their hits. Right. And it's, it's really cross-generational, too. And that's mm-hmm. what's so fun about doing her and these shows because, I mean, sure, there's, you know, a 50 plus and that's awesome. But then you have the grandchildren showing up or you have, gosh, I was looking at, um, what was it? Some big uh, figure skating competition. And it was like this, it was in Detroit and this, the youngest skater was like 12 and she was skating to Don't Rain on My Parade. And I just saw this a couple of weeks ago and my jaw was on the floor like, Oh my gosh, like this music is still coming around and it's it's just incredible. Yeah, yeah. Now, I've always loved Barbara Streisand, so I'm heartbroken that I will not make it to the show this I weekend. Know, me too. But uh, give people just a little taste of oh. what to expect. Let's see. I'm just, um, well, I can just do a couple little things. How about, um, oh my gosh, there's so many songs. You know how hard this is to do? <laughs> I mean, I can only do people so many times. I wish I brought my guitar. We could do Evergreen <laughs> or something thought, oh, like yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. Love soft as an easy chair. Love fresh as the morning air. One love that is shared by two. I found with you. Like a rose wow. <laughs> under the April snow, I was always certain love would grow. Love ageless and evergreen, seldom seen by two. And on and on and on, and I could just you know keep. No, going. that's great. That's perfect. 